So myself Pal Netra. I'll be dealing with uh, data transmission in our electronics and communication today. So how a data transmission happens? Any idea? Basically we have two types of data transmission. One is serial data transmission, the other one is parallel data transmission. Under the serial data transmission, basically, uh, what we have is, if you think this is my sender and this is my receiver, basically the sender has the bits at its transmitting end and it will be transmitting a single bit at a time serially. So let's say zero, it will be applying it to the channel first. Channel is, it might be a wire or it might be any wireless medium or anything so this is the channel and this is the receiver okay since you already know all those things so it will be applying each one of the bit individually or serially one after the other and those bits will be received at the receiver one after the other serial in so it is like serial out serial in okay this is how serial transmission of 8 bit data takes place so Usually what we have is, we'll be using something called a 7-bit ASCII code. All the data will be coded using ASCII code or ASCII standard, where ASCII is nothing but American standard code for information interchange. It's actually a 7-bit code which codes all the data, so all the, all the alphanumeric number are coded with some binary data of 7-bit. So, this is how we transmit the data. Whenever I want to transmit the data, I'll be usually uh, placing a start bit in my channel and I'll be transmitting the eight bit of data, like seven bit of ASCII code plus one parity bit. Parity bit is basically a bit used to check the error in the transmitted data. Okay. And at the end, I'll be placing a stop bit. So this is how serial transmission takes place. So coming to parallel data transmission, in parallel data transmission, as you can see here, parallelly all the 8 bits will be transmitted towards the receiver. Okay, that means to say it is a simultaneous transmission. So the drawback of parallel data transmission is that you should be having 8 lines. If you have 8 bit of data, then you should be having 8 separate lines between the sender and receiver for the data to be transmitted and when there is eight separate lines each line might, might have different delays depending on the bits that I am transmitting so that is one of the drawback that I have in parallel data but the pro or the advantage is that I can have faster data transmission compared to that of serial because serial is like bit by bit transmission Whereas parallel data transmission is uh, simultaneous bits. So parallel data transmission is more uh, faster compared to that of serial data transmission. Okay, now coming to what is asynchronous transmission. Consider that you have a transmitter, you have a receiver and both the transmitter and receiver should be having the clock which are operating in phase in phase means to say they both should be operating at same phases or same frequency you can think of it so what we do is basically whenever i transmit a data from my transmitter if the receiver is not at the same frequency of that of transmitter or same phase of that of transmitter it will be checking the received bit at different instance of time when you do that the data that is received is not proper okay whereas if they are both in phase then it will be operating at the midpoints of each and every bit period bit period is the period where i have a bit of data okay so if i say it is like uh, you don't have a proper bit period or you don't they are out of phase so first bit will be checked at this point second bit might be checked at this point third bit might be checked at this point fourth bit might be checked at this point 
fifth bit might be taken at this point sixth bit might be somewhere here seventh bit might be somewhere here eight bit might be somewhere here and the last one it might think I stopped so you can see the data have gone wrong now compared to that of the actual data it is one one zero one zero zero one zero was my actual data but if you see this lines now it will be taking like one 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 zero one 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 I mean sorry one zero 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 and a one so if you see this the data will be uh, error prone so for not having that thing what we do is we basically uh, have a in phase clock between my receiver and the transmitter okay this is about asynchronous transmission it is something like this you both the transmitter and receiver should be in phase so that the data can be probably uh, properly received if not then this catch will be dropped as you can see between the transport and receiver or here okay going to the next part that is UART UART is a hardware actually it is universal asynchronous receiver transmitter device basically it is a physical device or an IC which is always there in your system so what it does is basically whenever I have a data to be transmitted from one system to another system I have to convert the data which comes to my parallel input and I'll be converting that data to serial output and I'll be sending data bitwise your USB universal serial bus data will be going serially outwards in your USB bus so whenever any data comes to that bus again that means like if I want to transmit photo from my phone to my laptop the bits will be arriving in terms of a series series of bits okay series of bits will be arrived so those series of bits will be taken up grouped together as one byte probably it might be eight bit of data and that will be stored in the memory so UART is one such a hardware uh, which is there in your system for asynchronous transmission okay going to the next part that is synchronous transmission here again consider two things that is I have a transfer and I have a receiver but here the speciality is that whenever I have to send a data I'll be sending the data in such a way that both my transmitter and the receiver clocks will be in sync that means to say in the similar way the clocks information like if I say transmitter is operating at 5 kilohertz the prior information of the transmitter clock should be available at my receiver end okay if that information is not available at my receiver end whatever the transmitter clock is operating if that information is not available at receiver end again there will be an error in the data so synchronous transmission is basically your transmitter and receiver are in sync with each other so that it can decode the data properly so here that advantage is you have uh, the data with less error because they both are in synchronous the only thing is with the channel I mean with the flow of message you should be also having another connection where you have the sync information of the transmitter and receiver being shared okay so coming to the next slide okay so this is what I mentioned TX and RX are synchronous synchronized to the same clock frequency so the next uh, part is data compression so whenever I have to transfer the data I'll be not taking the data as it is and I'll be not transmitting it I have to compress it because I have to save some bandwidth and there will be redundant bits what is redundant bits basically redundant bits are those which are repetitive in nature so for example if you see this there is a color code here the green bits are three times the red bits are two times and they are repetitive so whenever there is a repetitive nature of bits 
I'll be discarding this bits and I'll be adding some information in my translated bits and I'll be compressing it. So you can see here there is two in this red some information is added so that at the receiver they will be knowing there are two bits or two packets of red three packets of green you can think so on and so forth okay so this is what we do basically I have a original data which will be having such redundant bits when I pass it on to a compressor compressor compresses the data by discarding that redundant bits and I'll be having a smaller packet once it receives or uh, once it is received at by the receiver it will again decompress back to its original form which is what all our uh, messaging and all is doing okay the whatsapp the facebook the instagram almost all they use data compression technique so an example for understanding that is basically you can you will be having alphanumeric numbers being transmitted while I type some text I'll be transmitting this alphanumeric uh, characters what we do is whichever character is most repetitively used like A I'll be coding with only one bit it might be 1 or it might be 0 like B is coded as 0 1 C is coded as double zero one zero. this is binary data and this is called as Huffman code okay forget the prob probability part now don't worry about this basically you will be having only this particular things so D is your uh, 4 bit data of 0 0 1 1 E is double zero or uh, triple zero one and G is uh, 4 zeros and 1 1 so similarly the rarest or the most rarely occurring alphabets will be having long code whereas the frequently occurring alphabets will be having short code so if you see here the original stream you can think of this as a data stream each alphabet is coded with respect to its Huffman coding we call this as encoding each character is encoded into its binary form and this Huffman code is grouped at byte level byte level means to say 8 bits together and this 8 bits are actually transmitted okay and this 8 bits might be further uh, gone through a process or undergone to a process called compression which we already saw in the previous thing so that that same thing can be happened so to remove the redundancies and all so this is one form of transmission that we do okay so the next part is encryption what is encryption basically I am sending some information or some message to my friend if a hacker or someone say for example I am sending him my personal details or my credit card details or my pin details or password or something if someone in the middle we call it as man in the middle attack a hacker knows or get to know that data then he can hack into my account or he can hack into my bank account anything so what we do is we basically encrypt encrypt is nothing but I change the data to an unreadable form by the man in the middle okay say for example I am transmitting some message so the message is in plain text I do some sort of encryption encryption is basically the plain text is converted into an unknown bit stream of data okay this will also be converted into bits internally and that bits will be operated on some operator some key key is nothing but not this key basically some data some binary data which is known by me and I'll be getting another data which is called as cipher text okay or encrypted data at the receiving end again I'll be operating another key which operates on the cipher data or encrypted data to get back the plain text so this is what uh, a general overview of encryption is if you have if you have seen your whatsapp probably whenever you change your sim or whenever you change from one phone to another handset there is a change in your security info you can check it out or if your friend has changed you will get an info like the security uh, information of this user has been changed updated so basically it will be using some codes of the phone like IMEI code and 
your phone number and all and it will be creating a key with internally so basically there are two types of key okay one is public key and private key in encryption concept public key is a key which is known by everyone whereas private key is the key which is only known by you okay so basically i'll be using a public key to encrypt my data and the data will be scrambled once the data has been received by the receiver he'll be using his private key to decrypt back the original message so that is the main concept which is a bigger concept which is not needed for time being okay just understand this in this overview a very top level understanding okay so this is about uh, data transmission i hope you understood the concept and this concept is not difficult at all so if you have any doubts any queries just feel free to contact me so all the best thank you